One of the many joys of cigar collecting is having the ability to source cigars that are of vintage quality. While all premium cigar blends are aged to some extent or another, what happens to these cigars once they have reached a humidor somewhere at a brick and mortar or an online retailer really determines how old they are. And while there is a point of diminishing return for aging a cigar, eventually it will just start tasting like cardboard and sawdust if you're not careful, a lot of cigars do benefit from an additional little bit of aging, maybe a year, two years, five years, or more. Now, this is all blend specific because you can't age certain lighter cigars for a very long time because they just get too mild. It just happens. But if you have a stick that is strong enough, vibrant enough, and rich enough to stand up to the hands of time, you might find yourself enjoying it more than when it's fresh. Take the signature selection Corojo from Agonorsa Leaf, for instance. This is a blend that we have been selling for quite some time here at Claro, and it has done very well for us. Agonorsa Leaf decided to change its packaging back in 2022. So being that this cigar still has the original packaging, which has been around since I believe 2018 or so, that means that this particular stick in my hand has quite a bit of additional age thrown upon it. Since this cigar it has a Corojo 99 wrapper, a Nicaraguan sun-grown binder and filler ingredients that include medio tiempo leaf, which is very vibrant and spicy, you will discover that this smoke is one you will want to age. Cigar Aficionado gave this Bellicoso that's in my hand right now a 91 point rating back in the day. Since it is a Bellicoso, that means it is six and a quarter inches long with a 52 ring gauge. A few other additional notes include the fact that this is an Agonorsa product, so all of the leaf that goes into this smoke is from their farms down in Nicaragua, and that the wrapper itself is a special type of Corojo 99 that is Cuban seed and Rosado Claro in color from the Jalapa region. And while the new Branding and banding on this blend is a waxy paper-like substance. The original foot band, which really is just a foil barrel wrapper, is very practical in its ability to protect the entire barrel of the cigar all the way up to that lower band. Is it really my cup of tea? Not really. It's a little tacky in my opinion. I prefer the newer packaging design that they've come out with, but I do appreciate its function over form methodology. Slide that sucker off and give it a woof and woofy woofy woof. Here we go. Wow. What a rich aromatic. Barrel smells a lot like black tea with a fat splash of sugar. Being from Alabama, I appreciate that. Yep, yep, yep. There's a hint of citrusy lemon notes behind it too, which also goes well with black tea and sugar. Yeah, tangy. The foot smells very different than the wrapper though. A bit more on that richer cocoa note, as well as far more leathery. And as I look at it, I see all sorts of darker leaf tobacco stuffed inside. There's that familiar black pepper aromatic that makes you want to sneeze a little bit when you smell it, which I try my, 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 my. On top of all these black pepper notes, I also get a dark fruity note that's very rich and almost like a port wine or something like that. Very intriguing and quite different than the smell of the wrapper. So let's see if that translates to a taste sensation that mirrors such. Let's get to it, shall we? But I'm getting ahead of myself. I have to talk about how it looks because it's fantastic for the most part. Bellicoso, deep cap, very nice, smooth to the touch. Well constructed in that regard and 
very firmly bunched and filled, almost to the point where I feel like I might have an issue with the draw. We'll have to see. The veins down the sides of the cigar are visibly notable, but smooth to the touch and have this very nice dark copperish umber color to them that stands out beautifully. There is though one unsightly spot right in the center of the barrel that you can tell it just didn't ferment properly at that point in the tobacco leaf and that's okay. It's probably going to taste totally fine. It's just a eh, little aesthetic miscue. Cold pulls are an interesting balance between that black tea and lemon note I get off the wrapper and a darker sugary sweetness that is, well, all from the filler and binder. It's not as peppery either as I would anticipate, but that's probably going to fire up a bit when I light her. Corojo spice within the cigar, with all that additional aging, has become a bit on the milder end for sure. I remember smoking this a little over a year ago and being pretty bold over right from the beginning, but this is very pleasant. It's more round, sweeter, more cedar forward, and a little bit on that caramel side. It's also got a very nutty aftertaste right now that reminds me of crack walnuts before they get roasted. As I move my way through the first third, I find that the draw on the cigar becomes more fluid. It's a little bit tight at first. The nuttiness and sweetness of the smoke itself also increases a bit, and the balance starts to come into play. It's no longer just a very spicy in your red pepper punch. However, if you retrohale the cigar, which most of us tend to do, you will pick up on more of those dried red pepper chili flakes upstairs, along with some darker medio tiempo intense tobacco tastes. This is balanced out nicely though by what you can find on your palate, which for this cigar at this moment is very tangy. The tanginess that it can be found within a Corojo wrapper is one of those unsung heroes of the cigar world. Corojo leaf typically gets labeled as you know, sun-grown and vibrant and spicy, but not everyone talks about all the citrusy, like lemon notes that come with it, yuzu peel and things like that. Living in Japan, we have a lot of yuzu citrus right up the road, which is in season right now. So I'm picking up on some of that yuzu candied jam-like pithiness. All the spice and dark sugars and full flavors I'm getting, it's delicious. The first third is also interesting in that it is on the lower end of medium in body, the upper end of medium in flavor, and then all the way into full when it comes to strength. So you've got a little bit of variety across the board. The halfway mark on the cigar is a bit more of that black tea note than anything else. It's still nutty, still very creamy in that sense of nutty milkiness, but the intensity of the tobacco itself has died back a good bit. Strength-wise, fairly peppery upstairs, but it's not what it was in the first third. The cigar is mellowing out and becoming more mature. These tea-like notes are something that you get post exhale. It doesn't hit you right up front. That's more of it's just sun-grown spice and familiar Corojo pepperiness and some citrusy tang. It's after you exhale when the sweetness starts to coat your palate, but you're left with a little bit of that black tea bitterness and depth, which is a very nice contrast to what you get when the smoke is in your mouth. Whoops. For much of the final third, the cigar has taken on more of those walnut, dark, nutty notes. It has become progressively drier as it goes. 
At first, this was pleasant, but as the cigar continues to combust, it picks up a bit of a burnt flavor. It's almost like you're roasting walnuts in the toaster oven and you, you leave them in for five minutes too long and they just start to burn around the edges. It's not overbearingly bitter or charry, but it leaves a bit of an unpleasant aftertaste upon the palate. The cigar also went out on me right, well, about that point into the final third. Even before then though, before I relit the damn thing, it was starting to develop these flavors. So I get a feeling it doesn't really have that much to do with the relight, but the actual blends combustion itself as it moves further down the barrel. I'm gonna keep puffing for a little bit longer, but while I do so, I'm gonna start giving you my full assessment of the cigar. I think it's a really good blend. I find it attractive in its appearances outside of the ridiculous amounts of gold on that foil wrapper, cover, whatever you call it, tubos of sorts. And I think that it has benefited from some additional age. I smoked one of these last year in the spring and found it to be a little too sharp. So I'm glad that I'm coming back around to this a full year later. High points on the cigar were its black tea and citrusy lemon slash yuzu peel marmalade-like notes here and there, and the way in which the Corojo wrapper tied it all together when it came to the darkness and full flavor of the internals of the cigar. But I had issues with smoke production, not just in the first third, but well into the second third as well. And it wasn't until this final third that I finally started getting a really nice amount of smoke production. The draw was always good, it just didn't give me a ton of smoke. Body throughout has remained in the medium range. Flavor has been in the upper end of medium. Strength has been in full, of course. And that leads me to wonder where I stand with this cigar. Because I do like it, but do I like it enough to justify giving it a really high review? It's good, don't get me wrong. Very tasty cigar, beautifully burning too. I, outside of it going out on me at one point, it has combusted evenly throughout and the burn line's been nice. The ash has been very sturdy, not flaky at all. And I haven't had to do one touch up along the way. So that's a win. But it also burned a little bit hot on me and even now it continues to do so. And the disappointing final third of this cigar has caused it to lose quite a few points. So all told, I have to give this a 4.1 out of five stars. Memorable, yes. Tasty, yes. And if Agonorsa Leaf can get this blend to have a little bit of a better final third, I think that it would be a higher rating. So if you happen to be in the market for a Corojo wrapped cigar with a little bit of additional age thrown at it, this is an interesting one to pick up that we currently have in stock at Claro. And I'm curious to see how this will continue to age because there are quite a few of these still on the market that are from pre-2022. But for now, I'm gonna get through whatever these parting puffs have to offer and uh, i put it down here in a sec. I'll catch you guys in the next review. Thanks for joining us. Cheers.